the low 12s this year, and if I'm lucky, get into the 11s. My name's Spencer, I'm 24, and this is my Ford Focus ST2. Uh, so as far as the mods go on this car, it's got a Garrett 2867R Gen 2. It's got a radium four-port aux fuel setup. I've got a Quaife limited slip differential, a spec stage three clutch, Fortune Auto 500 coilovers, and a bunch of other miscellaneous stuff. So I'm tuned by Brian Tyson at JST Performance. Uh, I'm running 93 and E30, got dual maps for it. Um, I'm making somewhere in the neighborhood of 440 wheel horsepower. Um, I couldn't be happier with the tune. Brian's a wizard. Uh, he gets me on my vlogs back in no time at all. Um, and I couldn't be happier with the tune. Um, so when the season comes around, I plan on drag racing it. I've got a set of m and Racemaster slicks waiting on me, 26 by 8.5 by 17. Um, just this past winter, I did the limited slip and I did this clutch. That was what was holding me back this year. Um, so I'm hoping to run low 12s this year, and if I'm lucky, get into the 11s. So in the future, I'd love to do a built bottom end. Um, if I could get rods, pistons, everything like that, as long as, along with the built head, these things have a really bad uh, valve flow over like 7,000 RPM. So if I could build the head, build the motor, throw a new map sensor in there, and uh, see how much this turbo will make, I'd love to do that. GTX 2867R Gen 2 in the back, kind of hard to see. Yeah. Um, it is welded wastegate with a tile 38 millimeter MBS wall valve. Right. I've got a Depot Beast intercooler. We got a Amazon intake, wasn't real expensive. And then we got the crown jewel, the radium uh, four port auxiliary fuel system. Nice radium. Exactly. I like the uh, I like the cleanliness you know that you've done with the wires. A lot of uh, engine bays I see you know just kind of have wires everywhere, but that's. Uh, you plan, you're going to leave it like that or you plan to do something else with uh, doing the wire tuck? I'd like to clean up all the wires. It's kind of a mess right now. I'd like to get all the connections soldered so we can get rid of the butt connectors and then kind of clean up all the wiring so it looks a little bit better. Um, but I'd like to point out the Damon motor mounts on both sides. I've got Damon motor mount over here. Oh, yeah. And then a Damon trans side mount that you can't see. It's kind of tucked away. Um, but big shout out to Damon. Those motor mounts are phenomenal. I couldn't have asked for a better motor mount. Nice. Hey, what's up guys? Cyborg here. I just want to let you know we've got these cool new shirts at STRS Army on Facebook or Instagram. Go get yourself one and they come in all sorts of colors and we can put all sorts of stuff on the back. So, yeah, you know you want one. Go support the Army. We'll see you there. chose the big turbo that you have and uh, the pros and cons about it and and whatnot okay so like I said I got the 2867 R Gen 2 um, I went with it because it remains some of that stock spool speed it doesn't take as long to spool but you still get all that top end pull so this will pull all the way to 7,000 rpm um, and it holds boost no problem and I'll be in full boost by 3,800 my only regret is now that I'm looking to possibly make more power is not going with a larger turbo. If I was to go back and do it, I'd probably go with a 3071 or a 3076 or even one of New Garrett's new turbos. Um, but for anybody who's trying to make 
anywhere between 350 and 450 wheel horse, I think the 2867R is a excellent choice. Okay, so so for people who are not planning on building their motor and just staying stock, 2.0 EcoBoost, everything, mm -hmm. you, you still think it's a good choice? I think it's perfect. I Because it's it's becoming more prevalent that you can push these motors to right around 400 wheel horsepower without really much uh, any problems. So for anybody who's looking to do maybe an ethanol, like an E30 setup, the 2867 will put you right around that 400 wheel horsepower, no problem. And then on 93, you'll make 350 all day.